welcome back to another video right here on free will photos today what i'm going to do is work inside a luminar neo 1.19 now this is a version that you probably have access to at the point of this video coming out the goal here is not to really work the twilight enhancer because if you caught my review video you know that i didn't go over that i'm still learning it but i am going to implement it into today's edit but really what I wanted to do here was show you how to use the suite of tools that Luminar offers. So it's not just a focus on the new tool, because what's important is knowing how to include the new tools into your overall workflow. So what I have here is a raw image where I was at the Empty Sky uh, Memorial in New Jersey. And this is a photo that I took at sunset. You can see that it's probably a prime candidate for really drawing out some of those colors, but it needs its original or its initial edit first, which starts for me at least inside of the develop module. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this over. Oh, it's already on camera landscape. We're gonna put it onto camera landscape again. And then I'm going to crank up on the exposure because I feel like it's getting too dark. I do have my uh, indicators on telling me where I am clipping. Uh, let's see if we can recover those highlights by pulling down on the highlights uh, because I still want some more exposure in this overall image. I think that this looks pretty good. I want it to expose well. I'm losing a little bit of detail in that lamp right there. I could probably just mask that out later. Uh, because it doesn't look like I'm getting much out of the highlight recovery anymore. So not gonna worry about that. That's all cranked up. Uh, we'll just lose some detail there. That's just, that. that's okay. I don't think anyone's gonna notice that. And I don't plan to print this. The next thing that I wanna do is actually come down here to the color section. Now, I know that the Twilight Enhancer is supposed to modify color a little bit, but what I find is I need to do some base color uh, editing and then apply that. That's in my own personal experience. So I'm just going to push up on the vibrance because the vibrant slider tends to uh, work very well for me in my editing uh, just as a base image. And then I like to push the saturation a little bit. I felt like this uh, photo was a little flat and dull, but you know, now with the uh, color that I've added seems to be working out pretty well. And then I will push my tint just a little bit towards the magenta. Uh, it was already at four, so I'll go five more points to nine. And I think that that does everything that I needed to do inside of the develop module. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that down and we're going to get started with the rest of the editing. So the next plea or the next part, I should say, is really with Enhance AI. It's one of my favorite tools inside of Luminar. I add it to pretty much all of my photos. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up on the Accent AI portion. And I really love what Accent AI does, uh, especially to landscape images. I don't get much uh, or I don't photograph landscape too often, um, but I do enjoy what this does. And then I'll probably pull up on the Sky Enhancer just a little bit, see what it does. Uh, maybe a lot of it. Uh, yeah, maybe something like there. That looks like it's working well. Now, this image is actually really cool because I have the sky and it is reflecting into these walls. So I'm really getting a lot of uh, bang for my buck with the Enhance AI filter. So the next step that I would probably uh, work on here is the Twilight Enhancer. So this is about the step that I would add this uh, because I feel like I've gotten to a point where I can actually start working uh, with the overall mood of the color. And that's what I think Twilight Enhancer really does help with and where it really shines is the uh, the overall mood of an image. Now, you could use these presets in here. I'm not actually going to use the presets. Uh, what I'm going to do is crank up on amount 
and then I'm going to pull up on the exposure to the opposite direction because you could go more moody. And in fact, maybe I will go moody. You know, uh, trial and error seems to be the best method for me. All right. And then when it comes to the sky, I feel like it's pretty much dialed in where I want it. But I'm going to add a little bit more magenta because, you know, I do have this really red uh, backdrop over here with the sun setting. And then I'll just warm this up a little bit to hopefully bring in some more of those uh, those redder tones. All right. We'll minimize sky. And I'm still trying to figure out what Don does. I should probably know, uh, but I don't really know. So if you figured it out, let me know in the comment section uh, because I have not. Now, when it comes to scene, when I pull on the shade slider here, uh, I actually like what it does with opening up the shadows just a little bit. Now, we'll work with shadows a little bit separate uh, here in a little bit, but I think pulling down on the shade, it works quite well for me uh, overall. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it's really just helping with the overall mood of the image. It's not really modifying too much. It's not like going crazy. It's doing a great job of subtly making changes that would look natural to the image. And I think that that's the point that uh, makes this such a great tool or at least a interesting tool. Now, if you crank this all the way up, you could like go super duper dramatic. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it somewhere in the 30s, maybe 38. I don't know. I think that that looks pretty good, just like so. Now, this photo doesn't have any water in it, and I don't feel like I need to refine the mask on this particular image, but you could do that. So I'll just go ahead and close down the Twilight Enhancer and show you the before and after. So this is obviously the before. It's pretty flat and dull. And then this is the after with a little bit more punch and uh, vibrance in the overall image. Now, at this point, what you can do is come back to Essentials. You can go with Color, and then you can open up your HSL. And you can really go to town here and modify colors. So maybe I want the reds to be more of a magenta, so I can just pull that back towards purple because I don't want it to be orange. And then maybe I'll make oranges more like a red. And, you know, I'm probably over moving these sliders uh, because everything in Luminar, especially when you have such rich color that you're working with, should be very, very um, minor tweaks. But for the sake of YouTube, I do like to push a little bit harder on my colors just to see what happens and then let's see what happens with the cyan because i know i got some cyan in the sky and what's reflecting and maybe something like this pushing the blues more towards a purple and then maybe pull the purples back towards blue i don't know i won't sit here and bore you that could be a very time consuming thing for me uh, because I could just tweak the colors until I get to a point where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm really feeling this. Uh, but I'll increase the intensity of the reds, the purples, and the blues. And then I'm going to pull back on the yellows in the image. Now, that helps with, at least to me, it's helping with balancing everything out. If I increase the oranges like crazy, it looks quite odd so i'm just gonna pull the oranges back to about 21 negative 21 uh and then just do a before and after it's a very uh gentle change i think that that's the best way to work with color personally uh, making gentle changes to the color and if you really want it to uh, pump up the volume on the color you could push saturation a touch and then maybe even vibrance it out just some more uh and now it's way more pronounced the way that i'm dealing with the colors in this image and i think that that's looking pretty good so i'll go ahead and close that down 
Now it's time to deal with the tones. And one of the best ways to deal with tones is using the develop module. And then I'll pull up on shadows. I'm not looking really anywhere else. I'm just looking down here. Uh, because what I'm going to do is use a luminosity mask. And this is one of the new tools inside of Luminar Neo version 1.19. And, you know, when you have all these tools at your disposal, you kind of got to know, like, okay, what do I go grab and when do I go grab it? The reason I'm grabbing a luminosity mask is because I really want to focus on the dark shadow areas on the bottom of the image. Uh, I could use a linear gradient if I wanted to, but I really want to focus on luminosity values and not really impact anywhere else in the image. So that's the reason why I chose the luminosity mask. So I'm just going to pull this away from the brightest areas of my overall image. So about there looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to drag up my fade to probably somewhere around here. Now, what I would love for Luminar to do is give us a uh, preview button to turn the mask off and on so I could see what's happening. Because if I hit the eye, it's not actually showing me uh, what's happening with my with my mask, right? That's just turning off the overall effect. Because if I hit this uh, luminosity button again to come back, now I can see what is being uh, opened in the shadow areas. And now I'll have to come back and maybe lower my volume on the uh, shadow slider. So now I can really see the impact that this is having on the overall image. And I like what it's doing there. So the last thing that I'll do in this particular image is really focus on saturating the reds in this particular area. And I'm going to do that with a develop module. And then I'm going to draw the mask first and I'll use a radial mask. And this will just be a really small mask, something like that. And we'll squish it in, make it come out like so. And then I want to bring that down and then feather it out larger. So it's really going to be a subtle adjustment, or at least I think it is. Uh, but we'll find out here in a little bit. Now, with these masks, you got to get them right the first time because you can't come back and change them unless you want to start over on the mask again. So you can't like refine it. Uh, and if you know a way to do that in Luminar, then please let me know because I don't and I would love to be able to do that. Uh, that's actually one of my biggest pet peeves with using masking inside of Luminar. So now we'll come back to the adjustment. I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit only in that area, maybe even contrast it a little bit. And then I'm going to come down to the color section and throw up the vibrance and saturation. All right. So now that's a little bit more intensified in there. Turn it off. It looks pretty good. Turn it on. And in my opinion, I think it looks a little bit better. Uh, I know that that could be subjective or this entire, I mean, this entire edit is subjective, right? Um, but these are my changes that I would make to this image. So turning it off, you can see that the overall photo is pretty flat and turning it back on. I think that this is doing the photo some justice. It looks pretty good. Uh, and I would actually work with that. So the final thing that I'll probably do to this image is I think it's under creative and it is, is I'm going to add a matte look to this. So in order for me to do that, just crank up on the amount here and I'll fade just a touch. Maybe pull the amount back a little bit and turn this off and on. And I think that, you know, that just helps with the overall aesthetic of this image. So let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on including the Twilight Enhancer, because here's, you know, kind of what I've 
uh, put on this image. I got one, two, three, four, five, six edits, if you will, on this image, not including the base edits. So if you add those and that's seven, um, I could have gone a lot further. I could do a lot more with this image, but I wanted to keep it pretty straightforward and simple. So if you found value in the video, then please smash the like button. I want to hear your comments about how you would use Twilight Enhancer after you get to using it. Just come back to this video and say, Chris, this is how I'm using Twilight Enhancer on my photos. And as I experiment with it more and understand it a little bit more, then I'll be bringing more videos about it. So until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.